Okay, this is an interview, uh, November 21st, 2002, New York State Military Museum Veterans Research Center, Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, it's approximately 1 o'clock. Uh, the interviewer is Michael Russert. Could you give me your full name, your date of birth, and place of birth, please? Okay, my full name is Donald G. Hoprich, and uh, my date of birth was uh, 210. 1924 and uh, okay um, where did you attend school what was your uh, schooling before you went into the military service uh, my schooling was in Albany New York and I graduated from Albany High School in uh, 1942 okay yeah. um, when where were you and what was your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor what had happened at Pearl Harbor I was at home. It was on a Sunday. I lived on uh, Upper Second Street at the time, and the news came over the radio while I, I was doing my homework, which was a no-no in those days. <laughs> and I was really upset because we didn't know what would happen and what was going to happen to the families and our lives. And I told my parents that the news had just come over the radio, and of course they were nervous and upset too. Mm -hmm. um, did you enlist or were you drafted? I was uh, drafted into the U.S. Army. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, where did you receive your basic training? My basic training was at uh, Fort Leonard Wood in uh, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And this was in uh, 1943. Mm -hmm. Was this your first time away from home? Uh, not really. I was in the Boy Scouts for many years, so I had an opportunity to camp and get away from home. Okay. Uh, could you tell us about your training? What kind? Of, did you receive any specialty training, or? Uh, I was trained uh, basically with the Engineer Corps, and uh, our training included uh, rifle range practice, and uh, uh, we had hikes and. Um, uh, the short, uh, what do you call it, close order drills. And, mm -hmm. uh, we had all of our shots and things and uh, prepared us to go overseas. Uh, we were not trained as a combat uh, unit, but we were trained as a support unit. The 1084th Engineer Utility Detachment was what I was assigned to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, how did you stay in uh, the United States for very long, or did you go overseas and just I was, directly after boot camp? I was in the United States for a very short time before uh, being sent to um, Fort Claiborne, Louisiana, where I joined my permanent unit, which was the 1084th Engineers. Mm -hmm. And f from there, we were prepared to ship uh, overseas. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you get overseas? Uh, from Camp Claiborne, Louisiana, we took a troop train. We were boarded aboard a troop train and taken across the country to California, San Francisco. Fort Stoneman, uh, Stoneman was the uh, port of embarkation. And we were there a very short length of time before we were put aboard a troop ship, the New Amsterdam, which was a converted passenger line. Mm -hmm. We were. Uh, sailed under the San Francisco Gate Bridge and we're on, the, on our way for 42 days. And we didn't know where we were going, but we stopped at various ports on the way. We stopped in New Zealand and Australia and in Columbus Ceylon. I think it's Sierra Lanka today. And then we went through the Indian Ocean into the Red Sea and on into Egypt. Uh, into the Suez oh, so Canal. You went across the Pacific and Across the Pacific into the Indian Ocean and up the Red Sea. That mm -hmm. was the route. And we uh, disembarked at Suez in uh, Egypt on the canal. Did you have any ceremony crossing the equator? Yes, we did. We had the King Neptune mm -hmm. <laughs> ceremony, and uh, that was quite enjoyable. And I believe it was more enjoyable because the commanding officer got dumped in a pool, I believe. <laughs> So that was all part of it, and uh, we had uh, church services aboard the liner and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of drills because uh, this liner went over unescorted. 
and uh, that was rather nerve-wracking. And uh, at night, there was no light showing. All the portholes were covered. And the only protection we had was anti-aircraft fire and uh, depth charges that could be launched over the side. But fortunately, there were no incidents on the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the anxiety was mainly where were we going, which we didn't know until we hit the uh, uh, Red Sea going into Egypt. So, okay, what did you do once you reached Egypt? Uh, once we reached, the first thing we did was had an um, inspection. Mm -hmm. We had to stand for inspection. And then we had to um, develop a campsite on the desert outside of Suez. And that involved uh, masons and carpenters uh, p putting down a cement platform and a uh, two-by-four framework for our tents. And then we were uh, assigned various duties uh, in construction in that area and nearby areas. Could you explain or tell us about some of your duties? Uh, my duties at one point were uh, mostly in the electrical uh, end. I worked in a warehouse, an electrical warehouse. And um, at one point, uh, my unit some of my unit were moved to a uh, commando base on the Mediterranean coast, which had to be uh, dismantled because it was no longer in use. The, uh, the invasion of southern Italy had begun, and uh, they didn't need this anymore. So we had to take these bases down and load all the equipment and things on trucks, which mm -hmm. would be recycled then, the materials and the equipment. And that was one of my duties. Mm -hmm. and, uh, then I, uh, I mean, I don't want to skip too far, but I did at one point, I was shipped to Dakar in West Africa. And that meant a, uh, a plane ride uh, up the coast of Africa, stopping at Libya and uh, Algeria and Tunisia and so forth, and to what Morocco your, and down. What were your relationships? Uh, did you get to meet a lot of the people in Egypt and... Uh, we were told when we went over that uh, we had to be very careful about fraternization with the, with the population. Mm -hmm. Although they were not openly hostile, they still um, favored the Axis uh, powers. And uh, we were told never to um, go into the cities by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We were always to go with somebody else or a group would be better. And we did that. We, we, uh, and when we had time off, we would visit uh, Cairo, Egypt, and Alexandria. And we couldn't go into Suez, where we were stationed initially, because of bubonic plague. That was never open to us. But we could go into Port Said, which was on the canal. Mm -hmm. And we, we basically kept to ourselves. We would go into cafes and, and uh, go into these bizarre areas and buy gifts for home. And we didn't have an awful lot of time off, but when we did, we, we would ride on the back of a, an armory truck. They, they were moving supplies around, and we sat on top of these trucks and would be transported to the Egyptian cities. Mm -hmm. And these excursions would usually just extend two days. And that was it. Okay. Um, I guess then your next assignment was in Dakar. Yes, we flew uh, down the coast and down the, w the west coast of Africa, which would be on the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. side, and refueling, uh, as, as I mentioned, several places on the way. The last place we refueled was way out in the desert, and it was just a little gas station and a few tents. And then uh, we w went on to uh, the car where there, were, uh, an air where there was an airfield and roads in construction at that time. And I was assigned uh, to work in a power plant, which was a diesel-fired uh, 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 generator, electric generator, mm -hmm. on shifts. And that is where I met my fate, my, my injuries. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, I was working alone at the time on a night shift, and some. I had my Gas, some gasoline had spread to my, got on my shirt, and somehow it was ignited uh, by a changing a battery. I got a spark, and I was put on fire. 
and as a result I suffered uh, first, second, and third degree burns. And uh, they thought at this time I probably should be shipped back home for treatment, which was a wise thought. So at that time I was loaded on a plane with other injured and flown back to uh, Casablanca in Morocco. And there, after being stabilized, uh, they put me aboard a um, Liberty ship, uh, the Robert Dale Owen, I believe was the name of the ship. And we were transported back to the States in a huge uh, convoy. I don't know how many ships were involved, but it was from horizon to horizon, practically. Mm -hmm. And uh, occasionally depth charges would have to be uh, discharged from the ships because of submarine activity. And we were probably about 10 days en route back to the States. And just before we entered port, about a day before, we had news that the um, uh, the Axis powers had surrendered, and uh, that was a joyful news. And uh, then we landed in uh, Newport News in uh, Virginia. And from there I began my trips to hospitals and recuperation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, if from there, um, I, w I was sent to Rhodes General, was this relevant? Uh, uh, Rhodes General Hospital in Utica, New York for evaluation of my wounds. And they determined, the doctors determined that I needed skin grafting on my right hand. And to do this, I had to go to Valley Forge General Hospital in Pennsylvania. I believe it's near Pottstown. And there a lot of burn cases were coming in from soldiers injured in tanks where they would catch fire. And they did skin grafting on my uh, wrist, hand, and fingers on my right hand. And that was, there were two operations there, and then I was sent for a rest and recuperation uh, to Lake Placid, New York, for several days or weekend, and then sent to um, Atlantic City for reassignment. Uh, at that point, I, they, the Army figured I was going to be useful for, to them for a while since the Japanese were still engaged in war with us. So I was assigned to uh, Fort Dix in New Jersey where they were receiving uh, veterans uh, to be discharged. And my job there was uh, as a record clerk. I, I was a uh, T5 corporal at that point and had a small crew working with me uh, in recording uh, things that had to go on the surface records such as the soldiers' shots and the date of entry back into the U.S. and so forth. And, and how long did you do that? Uh, I did that until we got the joyful news that the Japanese had surrendered. The A-bombs had been dropped and uh, the Japanese had capitulated and we celebrated. And we figured that was about it for us. We would soon be discharged. They did the discharging on the basis of points, so much for service, so much for overseas time, and so on. And uh, I was discharged in, in, I believe, 1946. And uh, I had all my records taken care of right there where I was working, and uh, loaded aboard a bus uh, that took me to the Port Authority in New York City. And there, from there, I got a cab to Grand Central Station, took a ride up the Hudson River, the beautiful Hudson, and home in Albany, New York. And that was uh, basically the end of my service. Okay. Um, did you make use of the GI Bill after? I did. I did. I, I got the eligibility certificate uh, under the GI Bill, and I, I went to work to learn the hardware business. And there was a hardware store in Albany, New York, in the South End. And there I, I learned uh, how many items they had and what they were and how to sell them and how to stock them. And it was very interesting. And I did that until I, a short return to high school, I, I wanted to pick up some subject that I missed well, before graduation. Uh, and I did that. And, uh, 
And later I met my beautiful wife here and we were married and raised a family, ten children. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I see that in the back. Uh, did you um, join any veterans organizations? I did. Uh, I, I joined three or four. Uh, one was the American Legion for a while and the Catholic War Veterans. Uh, the, the Veterans of Foreign Wars was another one and uh, currently I'm in the Disabled American Veterans. I've been in that for over 20 years. I'm a life member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, uh, the, the group you belong to, does it have any reunions or have you kept in I, contact with anyone? Well, I did keep in contact with some of my friends and buddies over, from overseas for quite a while. I believe they're all deceased now, but I never went to any reunions. I was never really aware of any. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I would read in the paper where certain reunions mm -hmm. were held, but I never saw our company involved with that. Mm -hmm. So I just assumed that they weren't reu uh, reuniting for any yeah. reason yeah. or whatever. Um, <coughs> did you have anything to add that maybe we didn't talk about? No, I included where I had lived and uh, where I was born and so on, but that's... Um, I received my induction at Camp Upton. I believe we covered that. And, uh, Fort Leonard Wood was my basic training. And uh, Camp Claiborne was where I joined my uh, unit, which was to take me overseas. And uh, the train ride across the country, we covered that. And, the, and being shipped down to the Golden Gate Bridge. And the first port of call was... Um, New Zealand, I mentioned that, and Australia, and Colombo, Ceylon, and Egypt, where we landed. And um, it covered my tour of duty over in Africa and my return home. Mm -hmm. I believe we covered all of them. Do you, uh, how do you think your military service affected your life? Well, I think it made me grow up somewhat. I mean, as a 19 year old going into service, I was uh, not too mature at that point, I don't think. I mean, I had a lot of things to work out. And the discipline, I think, helped me a lot, uh, military discipline, and it taught me how to you know, work and work in shifts and uh, to be responsible for what I was doing because others depended on, on me for that. And basically, um, I think it, it made me a better citizen. And I was, I was glad for it, eventually, on, in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Now you brought some things in. Uh, I did. If you want to, I, I'm gonna take the cover off this so oh, okay. a little better. Mm -hmm. I'll put this over here. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> okay, what we're looking at here is the US Army blouse which was worn uh, when we were dressed up on parade or going home on a furlough. Mm -hmm. And this was my, the last grade I had was a T5, technician, corporal. The U.S. Army um, insignia. And this is also the United States great seal here. This indicated the discharge from service. And uh, the... Um, what about this patch? What is this patch? Okay, this patch was uh, in indicated the Middle Eastern theater in Northern Africa. Mm -hmm. That's what we wore. And how about the one on the other? And this was the U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers. Okay, and this patch on your This patch was worn after I returned uh, and I was assigned to the uh, Quartermaster Corps in uh, Fort Dix, mm -hmm. New Jersey. That's where I did the record work. And these were the, um, now you're going to ask me what were these were. <laughs> this was a good conduct medal, American theater. And this was a, um, um, I'm not sure. <laughs> and one was the Middle East, a Middle Eastern theater, and this was the, um, the victory medal. Mm -hmm. 
and that's what they are. This was the good conduct, and this was the, the victory medal. Would the green one be the, uh, either the Africa or the China, Burma, India? This one? The Asian. I think that. We can look at it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, did you have any other papers with you? I thought you brought some other um, things with you too. Yes, I did. I don't want to get disconnected here. Let's see. Um, could you make copies yes, of, we could. of this? Um, this covers in a very general way um, my service. My father was um, quite a writer in his day. He, he loved to write letters and that was his job in the steel company. And so he, he did the uh, writing to the newspapers and the pictures are of me when, after I was wounded and home and my friends, some of my friends here. That's my sister and my father. Mm -hmm. And these two are my friends. He later went in the Navy too with his brother here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then the back here there's others. Um, okay. You have a picture of how I looked on the desert with my desert hat. Okay. I'll, I'll uh, make copies of all of these too. This, this was another picture which I would like to keep for my children. We'll just make copies. Um, this is me in Alexandria, Egypt in uh, 1943, I believe. Okay, and this is my discharge. I don't know if you want to see that. We'll make copies of these. And this is the uh, military work list. Okay. And this is just a copy of the discharge, uh, one side of it. Mm -hmm. And this is the uh, pass, part of my passport. I think there are two sheets there of the passport. You can keep those. And, um, you sure? Unless you yeah, wanted to make your own from here. This is the mm -hmm. same you thing. Just keep them and put them in the folder? Okay. We'll, we'll put these yeah, that's, the that's basically okay. this. And uh, we'll make copies of these. Great. This okay. is my dog tag. Oh. Maybe you could keep that if you wanted to with the uniform. Are oh, you maybe. sure now? What, you know. I, I don't think anybody would want it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to put it on me. <laughs> uh, before you do that, because with uh, 10 children and how many grandchildren? 25, I okay. believe. The latest count? Right. 25. <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you very much for the interview. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome.